Hello fellow podcasters, today we got the newest book in the Warriors saga, A Star Wars Can Warriors River. And well, let's get right into it. So, the Warriors River is the start of the Starless, Starless Clan series, which makes me think that perhaps the Warriors are kind of drifting away from the original code that they always follow. And the Warriors code has been a big thing throughout the entirety of the series, so I'm, I was super super interested to see how that would unfold. And Aaron Hunter, well, they delivered. This talks of three different cats, and I think they represent three different aspects of which the clans are kind of drifting away from the code. Because remember, at the end of the end of the broken end of the broken code, the lights in the mist they came back from Star Clan to say that some parts of the warrior code had to be altered, and they do alter some parts of it, including a, a clan leader could be driven away if if needed by the clan, and also that lovers between other, like, star class lovers between other clans were now allowed as long as the person transferring clan could do some kind of challenge, which is cool. So we have these changes going on, and we've got three different cats. Flamepaw, who, who, is, the, who is a descendant of the legendary Firestar, because Firestar is the coolest cat of all time. Well, he really doesn't like the expectations that everyone puts on him because oh you're Firestar's kin so you're good at hunting you're Firestar's kin so you're good at fighting everything that he accomplishes is not based on what he is but what Firestar was and what his kin has accomplished within Fi- Thunderclan and that makes him get doubts like is Thunderclan really the greatest clan of all of the clans and do I really agree and why have they named me Flamepaw when I'm fully black like, if to him, it doesn't make sense. And I, I really kind of resonate with that, because like that feeling of you doing not what you want to do and being placed false expectations, I think everyone, to some extent, at the very least, can somewhat agree with that and emphasize with that. And then we got Sunbeam. Sunbeam within Shadow Clan within, is, is a Shadow Clan cat. And within Shadow Clan, there seems to be a lot of... A lot of... A lot of basically discord like like a uh, uh, cat that she thought loved each other like that would become her mate he broke it off with her and shadow clan seems to be disagreeing about well everything and it's just not a good situation with the shadow clan and frostpaw frostpaw is the new river clan medicine cat well she's a medicine class medicine cat apprentice and what happens, literally what happens, is Misty Star freaking gets a heart attack and goes right. And then the deputy is found dead in a freaking ravine. And when Star Clan sends her a sign to choose a new deputy, uh, choose a new clan leader, that clan leader, which also happens to be her freaking mother, gets killed by dogs. Every clan has no leader. And that's how the book ends. And I think, really, I find it super, super interesting. Because, like, for example, about Flame Paul, like, about him being judged for not what he does, but what other cla- other cats did to her, um, did to him. Um, I think that's, like, I love how there's a dynamic where Bramble Star kind of agrees. Like, Bramble Star kind of emphasizes with that. Because his father was Tiger Star, like, the original Tiger Star. So he, find, he kind of emphasizes with the fact that being judged for something that not, is not your fault at all at birth, that, that seems to make sense, right? So I, I loved the part where he kind of emphasized with Flame Paul. And also, I, I like the dynamic of ThunderClan's leadership kind of being shaken, because cats are afraid of Bramble Star more than before, because when Ashford was in his body, he was a tyrant, right? So uh, I felt like it really made a lot of sense that that cats were kind of afraid of him, even though Bramble Star is a nice cat. And he really hates the fact that people are afraid of him, and I think it's a nice little dilemma there. I also loved how um, Aaron Hunter kind of leads us on. Because one of their main advantages is that we've read a lot of their work, right? So what she does, what they do, is basically what they say is, okay, so um, the, the Frostpaw, Frostpaw, 
she chooses her own mother as the next clan leader because of a sign from Star Clan, right? So that's obviously something that could be misinterpreted by other cats as she just wants her mother to be the clan leader. And that could be really, really bad for her. And I kind of thought, okay, so that's where the conflict is going. Nope, mothers ripped apart by rabbit dogs. And that really leads us on because that stem, things like that of a similar pattern had happened before. So Aaron Hunter is now kind of using that expectation to trick us. And I thought that was really, really smart. And that leads on to the main parts that I was really impressed with. The thing is, nothing about this book is completely new. It's just a recombination of old concepts about the conflict on the warrior code, star cross lovers, and these different cats feeling as if their destiny is not what they're doing at the moment. Which I feel like makes a lot of sense. And there's no particular special plot twist or something super unique, something super new. Like, for example, the broken code, like the entire possession thing, that was super new. There's nothing that new within, within the, this, this within this book. However, this book itself, the existence of this book, it feels like a testimony to Aaron Hunter's experience overwriting so many Warriors books, Brave Lands books, Survivor books, Seeker books. They've written so many books. And it feels like a testimony of that skill. Because they're creating a sense of, of the Warrior Code slowly deteriorating and destroying itself from the inside out with three completely different stories. I consider myself a writer, like I like to write, and that's really, really hard. Like, trying to bring some three different, completely different personalities, completely different cats, completely different stories into one central theme for one central sense of a message of the word code breaking down, that's not easy to do at all. And someone, and only an author, or authors in Aaron Hunter's case, um, who has a lot of experience writing can do that. And it feels like a testimony to that, to that experience that, 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 used, that they are so used to their own writing that they can do stuff like this. And I found that really, really impressive. I found it super, super cool. And that's why I really actually like this book, even though there's nothing super special or super new about it. And that's about it. I would give this book an easy 9, 8.9 out of 10. It is just, it is just a, such a testimony to skill and writing and storytelling. And I thought that was really impressive, even though I wasn't super surprised or super interested with the new concepts that it, see, it seemed to introduce. And like always, your plot quester and a plot quester. Have a great day. Highly recommend the entirety of the Warrior series. It is pretty, pretty awesome. And yeah, goodbye.